What's up, guys? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Wednesday, July 18, 2018. I'm Tim Geddes, joined by Gary Witta, because it is Witta Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be back. I was out last week because of the World Cup, so I'm mm-hmm. glad to be back. Yeah, I'm sorry about that, by the way. Oh, it's okay. Things we had, didn't, we didn't had a good go right run. for you, right? That's no, no, in the end, they didn't. Yeah. Your uh, your doppelganger, Harry Kane, yeah. won the Dropped golden the boot, however. Oh, he was good. He, did. Oh, we, yeah, he, okay. was, he was okay, mm. but he scored more goals than anyone else, so he won mm. a trophy called the golden boot, which goes to the top goal scorer. Okay, the but golden yeah, we didn't, boot. Uh, I like that. We thought it was coming home. Yeah. It didn't come home. Maybe one day. Maybe, maybe next, next time. year. Next four years. I don't think I'll see it in my next lifetime. Maybe. We have a good young team. Maybe. Maybe in t- two more years, European every Championships. Two years. No, well, the, no. Yeah, the European Championships mm. uh, alternate. Mm-hmm. So every two years, there's a big international tournament. But the World Cup's every four years. Four years. Okay. So we'll see you getting four. There's been a lot going on in your life, Gary. You got a How's haircut? That? I got a hair. I got all of them cut. You were just telling all like the, like hey, the dad jokes. I like, like that. Dad you're jokes. our dad. I got the dad. And, and so then also like your test is on the way. My Tesla's on the way. That is, There's a guy in my house pictures. right now putting in the um, the wall charger, the wall uh-huh. connector that, that you plug it into. Very exciting. And being a dad, you got the SUV one. I got the dad. So I get to have space. a midlife crisis uh-huh. and do something nice and for my family practical. at the same time. Yeah. Oh, it's what good. a time it's the, to the be The practical alive. midlife crisis. <laughs> oh, I got to love it. Let's get through some housekeeping here. Uh, Comic-Con is this week. Right after this show, Nick and I are about to fly down there. Greg is hosting the Marvel Games panel in Hall H, which is a really big deal. It's going to be my first time in Hall H. Ever. Hall H is huge. Yeah, I'm excited for this. Uh, that's tomorrow. And then also tomorrow, me, Nick, and Greg will be hosting the Rocket League's third birthday party at Petco Park. Uh, and that's free. You don't need a Comic-Con uh, badge or ticket, anything, because it's at Petco Park. You can just go, show up. We'll be doing meet and greets, playing Rocket League. Xavier Woods is going to be there, a whole bunch of WWE superstars. That's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, and then Kind of Funny is going to be streaming with Skybound on Friday morning. That is also us in WWE. Xavier Woods just really likes us, and I really like him. That makes me happy. Uh, and then Greg's hosting the Pool Panic World Championships from the Adult Swim State Park Friday night. And finally, there's a sold-out Skybound meet and greet on Saturday. Uh, we will see you guys there if you already got your tickets. Um, if you want more info on any of this, go to kindoffunny.com slash SDCC. Uh, it'll have everything laid out. Today's sponsor is Omaha Steaks, but I'll get to that later because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily each and every weekday right here on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. We come to you with all of the video game news that you need to know. You can be part of the show by going to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD to write in your questions, try to squad up with people, or if we get something wrong during the show, you can go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. Let us know what we got wrong, and we'll correct it at the end of the show. You can get this as a podcast by searching for Kind of Funny Games Daily on your podcast service of choice including Spotify, um, or you can watch live on Twitch, or you can get the YouTube version on youtube.com slash games. It's weird when you start just talking about all the show stuff, how much your brain just goes into autopilot. Well, I was, I was actually about to say, you are good at this. Like, there's no, for people watching at home, there's no prompter no, no. over here, and it's, no. not on the, it's not on here either. You, that's all, that's you, that's you riffing. And it's like a mangled mess. I never get it no, in the, but the I mean, same order. I was listening to it going, damn, like, he's got this down. That mm-hmm. was like, it sounded like it was off a prompter, but it it's was, not. Thank you. I appreciate that. Let's him host paid off, I guess. Uh, let's start off with... What is and forever will be the Roper Report. Oh, Sorry, I believe, I, I believe you misspoke. I believe what you meant was what isn't and what forever won't be. Oh, I what? thought you were going to clarify your earlier misspeaking. Did I? It's Did very I popular right now to clarify things that to say you actually meant to say the exact opposite of what you said the day before. I don't know what you're talking about. You don't? You no. don't follow politics? Oh, oh, okay. So it okay. took a while for that one to find. Yeah. find I was this. like, what are you talking about? You can't like, man, Tim, you the politics. Can't work with me here. We got four I'm news. dying, I'm dying. Four news stories today. All right. A baker's do dozen. Yes. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Oh, who Maybe knows? we don't. Who cares? Kevin, will you do it the whole time? The whole time. <laughs> Waiting for wow. me to say how many news yeah. stories. Wow. I appreciate that. Well, that joke was dying on its feet. You were there the whole time. I really appreciate that. Thanks a lot. The thing is, you can't throw serious things at me because you never, you never know where I'm at yeah, in like you, you know what I mean I, 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 now that I have this knowledge I feel mm-hmm. like I could use this to my advantage to have <laughs> Gary, some fun with Gary, you Gary Gary Oh, it was a double negative. But that's where the misunderstanding. That's what came, the problem you know was. What I, mean? I, I didn't prob- mean you. You got it right. Oh yeah. Kevin's way smarter than would. me. Tim's too gullible. <laughs> that's his problem. Oh, All right, guys, let's talk about some video games. Let's talk uh, about video games. This comes from Nick Santangelo at IGN. Microsoft will show quote all new Xbox hardware and accessories at Gamescom 2018. <laughs> Microsoft plans for August Gamescom include showcasing all new Xbox hardware and accessories. Microsoft's Larry Major Nelson Herb announced today. 
The new hardware will be debuted all, uh, during Microsoft's Gamescom edition of its Inside Xbox broadcast, live from its booth on August 21st. Naturally, Microsoft also plans to show off some features from its upcoming slate of Xbox games and perhaps even a few surprises. Major Nelson said Microsoft's Gamescom lineup will include 25 games from various Xbox developers around the world, like Forza Horizon 4 and Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Hell yeah. Cannot wait for the game. Have you played the first Ori? Yes, I liked it. Beautiful. It's fantastic. Beautiful game. Very excited for the sequel. Uh, also appearing in the show will be a PUBG mode that's new to Xbox One and State of Decay 2's Daybreak Pack, which releases in September. As for the new hardware, Executive Vice President of Gaming at Microsoft, our boy Phil Spencer, said during E3 that Microsoft was, quote, deep into architecting the next Xbox consoles, where we will once again deliver on our commitment to deliver the benchmark on console gaming. Those consoles are rumored to be codenamed Scarlet and to be launching in 2020. Let's what talk about this, this new hardware. What do you yeah. think it's going to be? What what can they do at this point within the current generation? The they, already, easy, they already slimmed it. Yeah. Right? The, they went to the, the 1S, S. and we have a 1X we as well. We have the 1X, the more powerful What's one. What's left? What can they do? Some more hardware and accessories. The easiest answer to this would be the next version of the Xbox One Elite controller. Okay. It's been rumored for long enough. That's a popular controller. Crazy very, very money, popular. right? 150 bucks, but people really love it. Popular enough that it sells out everywhere. Yeah. And it's been off shelves for the last couple of months. So that kind of shows that we're probably going to get a new version of it. Okay. Um, so I imagine we'll see the next Elite controller. But that's out. an accessory. I want to know about the hardware, the actual hardware. Box. This is like not a fun answer, but I, I feel like the most likely thing is going to be just some type of new skin. So far, we only have one Xbox One it's X. Like a different color or something? Yeah. We only have one Xbox One X, the black one. Right. So I can see them coming out. And that's with like, already smaller than the One S. So oh, it, and it's insane. God, not it's much, one of the it's already a very pieces. it's a very elegant box. Yeah. I love the One X. It's beautiful. But the thing is, like I would love a white one to, to just sure. go with the aesthetic of my living room. But, sure. uh, but does that count as new hardware? I don't, yeah. th I don't think putting any different color counts no, as new hardware. So it's new hardware. But then, what's the, but then new, what is there for them to do? Like, unless they actually, I mean, do they really need to make it smaller again? Maybe no, no, a no, 1X I S? I no, I don't, think knows? I don't think they'll do that. I think it would just be a, like, the PUBG Xbox One X. That would count as a new hardware. Oh, just like a new bundle? Like just, if, you think a skin, if, it, if they're saying new hardware, if someone says to me, there's new hardware coming out, mm -hmm. and that ends up just being a, a reskin, I, I'd, I'd be disappointed. They, in the past, have referred to the Xbox One Elite controller as hardware. So okay. another angle to look but at. But they say hardware be, and accessories. So the if accessories, a controller isn't an accessory, what is what is it? It could be some other random uh, like headset or something that they announced. Maybe they'll accessory. show that new accessibility controller that they've been working on. So they've with? already shown that. So here it says new. All new. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, that makes me think there's going to be something more substantial than I'm curious that I, I don't know but I'm struggling to think of something that excites me do you know mm -hmm. what I mean like they, yeah. they, they would have to really surprise the me the controller would excite me okay I, I, I was in the market I got the Xbox One X and now I'm like I want that they controller they could find a way to bring the price down a little bit yeah I don't think they're gonna maybe they maybe they could get the One S down to like 199 or something maybe uh, try and get a bit of a competitive edge back over mm. Sony because mm. they're getting killed right now yeah that's it maybe a, a 199 Xbox One I think would be I mean, a very price enticing. point could be in the mix. Yeah. Uh, we got some questions from the readers here. Darth Paxton, or as viewers, no one's reading this show. <laughs> that's the one thing you can't do with this show. That's very. That's, that's an old school habit that I that I still have because I say readers. Yeah, but no, you don't get yeah, to have readers. No, no one's reading. No, no one at no all. One reads anymore. Uh, Darth Paxton says, with today's announcement that Microsoft's bringing new hardware to Gamescom, like a new Elite controller that's been rumored for a long time, and Microsoft's announcement of the summer of PUBG, where one person will win a West Coast Customs bus. Mm. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Pit my ride, a whole bus. At what point is Microsoft's focus on and commitment to superfluous things surrounding the Xbox brand actually becoming a negative? I'm a longtime Xbox fan. I was blown away by their showing at E3, but I found today's announcements more than a little bit frustrating. Xbox is a video game brand. Don't show me another $150 controller I may or may not be able to take to my new Xbox in approximately two years. Don't show me another video highlighting a PUBG bus that one fan's going to win. Don't tell me about the Xbox gear shop that recently launched. Show me games that justify my Xbox One X or any games at all. I want to see games. It'd be one thing if Microsoft was doing all this on top of a steady stream of quality exclusives or this was a one-time thing they had in a on their calendar, but this is an ongoing problem. I used to enjoy Xbox dedication to the brand through things like merchandise and quirky videos, but without games, they've gone from entertaining and refreshing to falling flat to now actively frustrating. What say you guys? Well, it's, I mean, we said that they they are also going to be uh, showing 25 games, some of which we'll have seen before. Hopefully, some of which we haven't. Maybe there'll mm -hmm. be some new announcements in there. Yeah, I, Gamescom is a big show. It so is if a you're big gonna, show. You can do big announcements there. I don't 
from how this is uh, being phrased, and I, I might be wrong. This is a perfect thing for counterpoint.com slash you're wrong. I don't think that Xbox has a conference at Gamescom. Okay. I think that this inside Xbox broadcast from Gamescom is their announcement thing. So I wouldn't expect any new games of consequence. There might be right. some smaller titles, but we're not going to get a, a big But they blowout. did have, they, they, as, as, as your, um, as your uh, correspondent says here, they did have a very good showing at E3. Yeah, it was great. But, so, but we're think, over that now already? No, no. Like, already like, what else gonna, you got? I think they're going to follow up on that. We're going to see updates on a lot of the, on those, 20, <laughs> those 25 games. Uh, but it is, I feel like it's too little too late. It's not the right phrase, but it's, it's uh, disheartening to see no big exclusive coming out on the Xbox. Do you feel like Xbox year. is being competitive right now? Or is it, do you feel like they're not doing as much as you would like to, to see in terms of games and, and moving the ball forward? I feel like they're, they're setting up uh, a dominant next gen. I think okay. that right now they're kind of understanding that they're they're losing. And we talk about this all the time. Them losing is still better than most other uh, that any right. winners were in previous generations. Right. Like they're still in a really good place. Yeah. It's just that Sony. It's only even compared up. to Sony that it's not looking great. Exactly. Um, but with things like Xbox Game Pass and uh, the backwards compatibility and uh, just all of the 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 and even things like the uh, Elite controller. I get what you're saying, Mr. Darth Paxton, uh, about it being disappointing that we're not getting all these big exclusive game announcements and we are getting a lot of this stuff. But I feel like it's not one for one. The teams working on these type of features would never be the same teams. And it's not like the investments mean that the the games aren't being made. These are totally separate uh, verticals within the Xbox and Microsoft. I, I know it's not the sexiest thing, but I would like to see some price drops. I'd like to see a, new, a revised Elite controller at maybe under 100 bucks. That would be a significant drop because the Elite controller is good, but 150 bucks for a controller is off-putting to a lot of people. It is. I mean, that restricts it to only the the, the true hardcore. Mm-hmm. And I'd like to see a One S at 199. Again, if I'm if I'm running the Xbox division, I'd be in there with my hardware guys saying, "Look, the silicon price is coming down. It's, it's cheaper to make these things than it was a couple of years. We got it. We're behind Sony. If we want to close that gap, at the end of the day, you're looking at you're at Target or Walmart or whatever. You're looking at the two of them right there." If, the one, if one is cheaper than the other, maybe you go with that one and maybe that's how you close the gap. I would make some price drops. Again, not the sexiest thing, mm-hmm. but could uh, could really help them. I think that uh, to address something that, that Darth here is talking about, about not knowing if the controller is going to be compatible with the next Xbox, I'd get ahead of that and try to, as soon as possible, start building the future of the Xbox brand and letting people know, hey, this controller will be compatible. I think forward compatibility for controllers is a big... Uh, you look at the 360 controller. Mm-hmm. The Xbox One controller is basically the same controller. Mm-hmm. But you can't use your 360 controller with the Xbox One. You should have been able to. Yeah. And I've got like seven or eight Xbox One controllers. Whatever the next one is, the Xbox Two or whatever stupid name they come up with, mm-hmm. I would like to know that I don't have to ditch all those controllers. And because I guarantee you the next controller is not going to be that different. The the amount of research into the ergonomics of controllers that both Sony and Microsoft did this generation yeah. to get the controllers to where they wanted them. Yeah. It's like we we're, we've hit it. We're good. I me yeah. and Greg were talking about it. The DualShock Four does have things that we don't need, like the the touch thing. But I like we the Dual, DualShock 4 way better. Just just having the, the proper triggers and mm-hmm. a few of the things that they did. Way um, better than DualShock 3. Way yeah. better. And I, st- I, I used to it. hate the DualShock 3, but the DualShock 4 I will actually use. It was, that, it was that good of a upgrade. The Xbox One controller is still, in my opinion, mm-hmm. best controller ever made. Yeah, that's so... There's no need to Xbox refine Xbox One it. or Xbox 360? Well, I mean, I mean, you could say both, right? Because again, my argument is they're practically they're identical. They're similar. But they made a couple of minor enhancements to the Xbox One controller. The next, the next Xbox controller, I'm pretty sure I'd stake my reputation on it. Why change it that much? I mean, it's mm-hmm. already pretty great. People love it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think you're right about that. And, and I can stake my reputation on it because it ain't worth shit. <laughs> I'm happy to gamble it. <laughs> you got Kev with that Happy one. to gamble uh, it. Let's see. Well, we got one more question about this. Uh, James writes in and says, next gen Xbox at Gamescom. Hmm. I would have certainly said that it was too early to show a next gen console, but I think it's a really poor wording to say new Xbox hardware and accessories rather than a new Xbox bundle or edition. Because of that, and because they tease Scarlet E3, there's a part of me that wistfully wishes they would surprise us with a next gen reveal. Again, so many problems with it. So would it release in 2019? Showing new hardware two years out seems foolish because that'll be for Xbox One sales for the next two years. Not to mention what games could be ready to show, how far out are those. But if they did announce 2019 and did have real games with launch releases that would be a mic drop heard around the world i don't think there is a chance that we see the hardware reveal at gamescom 
of the next Xbox. I mean, maybe another little tease, but I don't think you're going to get anything maybe, of substance. Definitely maybe a tease. And, and I feel like a smart call for them would be to almost start getting ahead of the messaging and having it be this forward thinking thing of, hey, we're not giving up on the Xbox One. We are building a future that's going to be compatible with all these games and uh, services like Game Pass that we are investing in now. So you should invest in it now because it's only going to get better in the future. Uh, but yeah, if they were to come out and, and have their, their next gen reveal, you either do that at E3 or more likely you do it at your own event. It's exciting to be at the point where the next generation is now at least on the horizon. Like it's visible on the horizon. It's mm -hmm. not just like it's who knows fun. when. Because yeah. the last the 360 PS3 generation, as you recall, that was a long ass gen. Mm -hmm. It was really long. And this one's been, you know, I feel like this one again is it, it, we're, we're way deep into the life cycle of this one. It's the right time to be at least speculating about what's coming next. I just hope that it's that we're, we're finally at that point. I mean, we hit that point a while ago, the, the graphics. It's like, yes, PS4 looks better than PS3, obviously. But it's not like we're expecting the next generation to blow our socks off the way PS2 to PS3 did. I think right? what you're going to see is if you look at Xbox One X and PS4 Pro as like the halfway step there, 4K, mm -hmm. but still a little bit juddery at, you know, when it's really, really pushing. Mm -hmm. Like the PS4 Pro in particular struggles on some uh, 4K games mm -hmm. to, to hold. That's why you get that option. Do you want resolution or frame rate? Because it can't do both yet. Yeah. I like the next one, that that option's going to go away. You're just going to get all the bells and whistles, 60 frames a second, 4K. I mean, Jesus Christ, you should. Yeah. But the next generation ain't going to deliver 4K at 60 frames a second. We'll see. Reliably across the board. What yeah. are we doing? What's I, the point? I actually don't expect it. I mean, when you, you don't? look. No. When you look back at the past of, of systems, like, it's surprising to think that Xbox uh, One, even, not every game ran it at 1080 for a long time. Right, like 900 and stuff yeah. like that. So yeah, so it's like, I don't know that we'll, we'll necessarily see across the board 4K 60. I hope so. I mean, even now, I'm I mean, four, I mean it, has to, it has to hit 4K reliably. You go to, you go to you know, your, your big box store, you can't even buy a 1080p TV anymore. Like, mm -hmm. you, I, I just bought the other day, because we needed one for the bedroom, 55 inch 4K HDR TV, good brand, the one that Wirecutter recommends, mm -hmm. 380 bucks. So the price of 4K TVs is what? truly mass market. Seriously, get your ass to Walmart. <laughs> Talk to a guy with no shirt. He'll tell you what's up. Why is he not wearing a shirt? I don't, because Walmart, you don't have to. No shoe, no shoes, plenty of service. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. Uh, I seriously had a conversation with some dude with no shirt on about the benefits of this 4K TV. He was like, man, that, that TV can't be no good. It's too cheap. I said, no, I like, looked it up on Amazon. Look, it's pretty good. He's like, God damn. You are a gem, Gary. Did I'm telling you, it? you are a Did gem. You buy the TV? I bought it. It's 3, no, 378 no, bucks for a 55-inch no 4K guy. TV with HDR10. Wait, that's really cheap. Yeah, yeah. and it's, and it's not have... and it's not some bullshit. It's the one that wire, it's like wire cutter's recommendation for the best have... cheap 4K TV. Do you think they still have some? Yeah, there was like a shitload of them there. Probably on Amazon. Good. Look it up. TCL. We're, we're looking to get a the TV brand is the TCL. It's a Chinese brand, but don't let that worry you. It's top quality. I'm not going to lie. 55 that's, wor inch. that's worrying me. <laughs> that's worrying me very hard. Oh, man. Yeah, just don't say anything bad about China around it because it will <laughs> it, transmit listening. that back. It is listening. Yeah. Uh, next news story. This comes from Shabana Arif at IGN. Konami shuts down a PTPC remake, but this kind of has a happy ending in a mm. way. Hideo Kojima's canceled Silent Hills teaser has had a number of remakes, but a recent example, PT for PC, by 17-year-old developer Kimsa. Kimsa, it's Q I M S A R. I don't, I don't think you would pronounce the, Q, the you would just say Kimsa. I'm gonna say Kimsa from now on. Kimsa was looking pretty impressive and close to being finished. Unfortunately, the project has been shut down by Konami due to legal issues. But in an update, Kimsa says that he has been offered an internship at the publisher. Oh, nice. Working with his EU, US, and Japanese offices. That's cute. I yeah. like that. On top of the internship, Konami's hooking up Kimsa with some merch and video games. Kimsa is adamant that this is a purely legal issue and that everyone at Konami loved his remake. No specific reasons given for why this remake, as opposed to the many others in development, has been forcibly cancelled. Interestingly, Kimsar explains that a Konami representative told him that the publisher is expressing a desire to make games outside of the pachinko and mobile categories it's focused on and profited from in recent years. Despite expressing disappointment, Despite expressing disappointment that his remake was taken down, Kimsar said he was ultimately thankful that it was, saying that even if it's still really unfortunate that mine was taken down when it was so close to being done, it has given me a really awesome opportunity. I would say this is the reason why people do these, like the Uncharted fan film mm -hmm. that we just saw the other day. 
and these kind of remakes. Part of, the whole reason why you often do these things is to get, get noticed, noticed and make an opportunity. I mean, yeah. look at the guys that created Team Fortress and Gary's mod. Those guys all work for Valve now. Yeah. You know, they, they, they got they what they wanted. It, it, was their, it was their calling card. <laughs> yeah. It is strange, though, isn't it, how Konami is so weirdly protective about PT and have almost like kind of Stalin is style wiped it out of history because there was a whole thing that mm-hmm. uh, they took it from the store. Yeah. Like, I still have my PS4 that has that PT has it, on too. it. And that's and that's a value because if I were to delete it, it's gone. I can't get it back. Yeah. What is that? Why why were they so weird about it? I mean, it? I'm sure it and we'll never know the full story, but I'm sure the Kojima Konami, There's some weird Kojima uh, totally, animosity was yeah, going on there. It must be that. And in all in terms of all the licensing of Norman Reedus and, and everything they got going with that game, like I'm sure it was all just legal stuff mixed with a lot of animosity. Who is publishing Death Stranding? Sony. Sony, right. Yeah, first yeah, party Sony. Yeah, first okay. party. Yeah. Um so this is interesting. I, I think it's cool that Konami's giving him this opportunity, and like I hope this works out. For yeah, him. good for him. Yeah, like 17. I said, I think he got what he wanted out of it. Yeah, which is again, which is fantastic. These things are, are calling cards. What's exciting to me is this uh, notion that they might get back into actual real video games uh, as opposed to just the pachinko and, and mobile stuff. Um, you know, we've seen in recent years Metal Gear Survive, which was a disaster, and uh, Super Bomberman R on Switch and now on other consoles, which was fun. But not the best version of so, Bomberman. So Konami is basically out of the AAA business right now. Is yeah, that is that right? Yeah, with the exception of the things I just said, and Bomberman's not AAA. Um, they've been totally out. Like I'm, I'm hoping that we hit a point, and I don't know how likely it is because Konami's pretty fucked, um, and people hate them <laughs> right now. Yeah, the, the Kojima thing was a was a publicity nightmare for them. But I do feel like they can turn it around if they wanted to. And it's all about messaging. And, and this is, they're a very Japanese company, so I don't expect them to do this. But if they were to get out ahead of it and just be like, hey, look, all that stuff did happen. But we have a team of people that grew up loving Metal Gear, loving Castlevania. And they are the ones making these next games. Yeah. You know, like, don't worry about like, we got rid of all these people. You know, we were moving things. We, we have these young new leaders that ha- have this vision. It has nothing to do with the old team. Right. I feel like that. Can that's that's turn the way the forward. Cause metal gear obviously is too valuable a property to just let it lay fallow. Right. Mm-hmm. You're leaving tons of money on the table. People love it. The metal gear for all kinds of reasons, commercial, creative, spiritual, yeah. you name it. Yeah. The metal gear franchise should continue on. We want new triple a metal gear games, but they're in a tough spot because perhaps more than any other franchise in history, except maybe Miyamoto and Mario, that franchise is associated with its creator, with Hideo Kojima. Oh, absolutely. So now that he's gone, the key is you got to bring in the right people. Mm -hmm. And they've got to be people that love it and have the best intentions for it. Because again, you see even with Metal Gear Survive, it's easy to fuck up. Mm -hmm. It's easy to make these these games bad. And people are ready to hate on them. So you got to really, really crush it if you're going to bring back Metal Gear without Kojima in a way that people will embrace. Yeah. That's the situation they're in. Are you a big Metal Gear guy? I love Metal Gear. Metal Gear 2 is one of my all-time favorite games on the PlayStation yeah. 2. Oh, of course. What about That's Snake Eater? <sighs> Which one's that? 3? Metal Gear Solid 3? Didn't like that. I didn't like that. I, I didn't like any of them as, as much. I, 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 I like them all to varying degrees, but for me, Metal Gear, you know how they say like, your favorite, everyone thinks like the best genre, the best era of pop music is whatever was around when you were like yeah, a course. teenager. Yeah. That was the one that I played yeah. like, when I was in, when I was really into those games. And that's the one that stuck with but me. But do you remember the, do you remember the theme song to Metal Gear Solid 3? No. The Snake Eater? No. Theme song? Was there a song? So yeah. It was like the James like, Bond. lyrics and stuff? Bond, yeah, the oh. Snake Eater. Oh, they did a whole James Bond whole vibe yeah, it for it? I don't remember so that. Oh, okay. Well, anyways. Um, I had to do a thing. There was a thing on IGN recently. It was like uh, they did a podcast. It was what are the best, what's the best game on each generation of PlayStation console? Mm. And I, for pers- yeah, what's your personal favorite? No, yeah. the best is hard to quantify, yeah. but personal favorites. I went PS1 Parappa. I love you so much. Why not? No, I Why want not? it. Okay. Not? But I mean, just, just best? Or I no, guess personal like, favorite. Pers- but even that personal What's favorite. What's yours? Like, P- PS1. PS1. Man, now when you put me on the spot like that, that gets hard. But like Metal Gear Solid 1. Siphon Filter Final demo, Fantasy dude. 7. Siphon, Siphon Filter, filter demo. demo. <laughs> just the demo. <laughs> Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Okay, that's a that's a solid solid two. call. Again, that's not my that's not my cup of tea. So yeah. again, it wouldn't be my. Mm. That's why best is yeah, you're right. It's hard. Right. Personal favorite, Parappa was PS one for me. Metal Gear Solid two, PS two. Uh huh. Journey PS three. 
Oh, good Persona call. Five PS4. That's where I'm going. Wow. And I'm not dealing with. I'm not messing around with the mobile yeah, stuff. Yeah. But that's oh, where man. I went. Okay. Yeah. Solid. List. What would you do for PS3 and four? I don't know. This is way like I can't. I can't is even. Is this deal. out of your league? Yeah. I can't. I can't just. Journey is uh, probably my PS3 answer. That's yeah. that's really really. It's solid. kind of an easy one on PS3 because Journey is just so popular. I mean, Uncharted Two might be up there as well. Um, PS2, God, I don't even know where to begin. That would be like I said, I went with Metal Gear Solid too. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Devil May Cry one There's is just up there. There's so for me. many great games on PS2 for that yeah, era. Yeah. Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Oh, so good. Yeah. We should do a games cast. We'll bring you on Let's and, do and it. Re- redo Let's it, do it with all We'll the do it. We'll do it by uh, by generation by generation. Uh next news story. Smash Bros. director loves the hype. This comes from Famitsu. Uh Smash Bros. director Sakurai said that he's really glad that the roster didn't leak ahead of the reveal because the game wouldn't have gotten the same reception, adding that he has the feeling that announcing all the characters are playable may have been a Pandora's box that could ruin possibilities for what's next in the series. Sakurai said it was the first time he ever saw such a tremendous reception for just a game promo. The uproar was beyond encouraging. To be honest, I'm really glad that it didn't leak. If it leaked all... If it leaked that all characters will be in it, then it wouldn't have gotten the same reception. I really wanted to avoid having the work of several years get smashed by someone who wanted his little moment to brag. That's right. Sakurai explained that there were Nintendo employees who were kept in the dark as the game was a top secret project, saying that's why you saw cheers even from those involved at Nintendo. That's good. It's tough to keep those kind of secrets. Totally. And man, that was such a reveal. What was so? What was what was the big nature of it? When he says all characters, so so who were the big characters that were that people didn't know were coming? So the big. the thing with Smash Brothers in 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 the past, starting especially with Brawl, so Brawl and then the Wii U and 3DS versions, there would be a a blog that every day gets updated with something new. It's a okay. new item or a new character or a new stage or something. And so they wouldn't come out and just say, "Here, all the characters from the last game are back in," right. and then just add new characters. You didn't know if your favorite characters are going to be back in the new version until okay. they pop up. So they don't. With each new generation of Smash, they don't just add. Sometimes they take characters away. There's been there's okay. been about ten characters that have gone away, Got it. been replaced by other characters, Got it. or been just little changes here or there. Some licensing things like Snake. Uh, was taken out. He was only in Smash okay. Brawl, did not right. make it in the last one right? Uh, because of a lot of the weird licensing issues. Um, so then at E3 this year, when they did the Smash um, part of the Nintendo Direct, they they went through and they're like, oh, we're going to show a bunch of the characters that are going to be featured in the game. Right. And they showed way more than they ever have before. And it just kept going and going and going. And then it, it uh, in the middle of it, Snake showed up. And it was just like, everyone is here. And then it went, and every character, even like obscure ones like Pichu that were only in Melee. So if, so if there's a character that you love from any generation of Smash any Brothers, Smash Brothers, Brothers it's in this it's one. It's in this game. That's fantastic. It's fantastic. And like, it was such a moment. And who were the new moment. ones that were added? Who were the ones that hadn't been in we previous have, gens? So uh, Ridley from Metroid okay. is, is in. Uh, Inkling from Splatoon oh, the Inkling kids, yeah. is in. And then uh, there's Daisy, Princess Daisy from Super Mario. Has she not been in it before? Mm-mm. Oh, wow. Princess Peach was in. Okay. Daisy has not. Daisy is now in uh, as what they call an echo fighter. Got some questions right in from Javier Bonet Ruiz, who says, hey, Tim, when Sakurai was talking about Super Smash Brothers Ultimate during the year three direct, he talked about echo fighters and how they're similar to an existing character. Daisy was the newcomer who was similar to Peach. My question is, do you think it's possible to have an echo fighter from a different franchise? For example, what if King K. Rule was an echo fighter for Bowser or maybe Blanca from Street Fighter? Being is an, an echo, echo fighter, fighter basically the same character, but in a different skin, different skin with slight little tweaks so okay. right now the only ones that we've seen are uh lucina is an echo character of marth from the fire emblem franchise okay. uh daisy is an echo of peach dark pit, right? and dark pit is an echo of normal pit got it got it and so like one move might be different from each of them right just but if you can play one character you could probably easily move to the echo absolutely character. got it um would love to know your thoughts i don't think that we're gonna see cross franchise echo characters but i do expect to see a lot of them and I I wouldn't be surprised to see a couple third party ones I think that it'd be really kind of an easy win for them to have Ken be an echo character of Ryu from Street Fighter Uh, I think that would make a lot of sense yep Um, and I I think that there's like just a lot of of, of things like that that will probably end up happening Um, I'm blanking right now on other examples but uh, I, so they I haven't announced everything yet. There's still there's oh, still yeah. reveals and to come. So every day, just like the last two games, there's a blog that updates around 9 p.m. Pacific time on SuperSmashBrothers.com that announces okay. something new. Um, and I'm a little disappointed that you're not familiar with the Snake Eater theme song 
because last night's reveal was a Smash Brothers remix of the Snake Eater theme. Kev, can you please play that for me? Oh shit! Sorry, I don't it's have so that. fucking epic. Asleep at the wheel. No, I just didn't like. This is uh, he mentioned it, but yeah. Uh, uh. You know, then I fucking forgot about so, it. So something that's really cool about Smash Brothers, Gary, that yeah. you're going to learn later this I'm, year. I, wanna be, we, I want you to educate you, me about Smash Brothers. When we teach you how to play this. this. Is gonna be, it's going to be my opportunity to really kind of learn from the masters here. Mm-hmm. Uh, but something cool about it is Smash Brothers is kind of like it's a, is a museum of Nintendo history. And right. at this point, it's not just Nintendo. We, you know, we're getting some Capcom, we're video getting Konami, it's just video game history. And what's great about it is it's not just the characters and the stages and all this stuff. Like they have all these like music medleys that are created that are arranged by some of the most iconic uh, video game um, composers of all time. It's amazing that they can, that they can, that there's so much in these games, these Smash Brothers games, that they can update the blog every day with something new. With something like, new. Every day. And for it's weeks not always, on end. It's not always like interesting stuff, right. but, but every once in a while it is. Can you pull this right, up, Kev? Walks ready? Yeah, pull I'm it ready. up. I hit that snake eater. Nothing's happening. It's playing. Is it? Oh, yeah. it's muted. Hold on, hold on. Oh was, guys, that was on me. They Can't get good help these days. It is so epic. Oh, he definitely has a bond. Yeah. The feel to it. It's so fucking perfect. That, huh? Yeah, I'm yeah. liking it. I'm you, liking it. I get actually, it. Actually, hold on. Keep it going. There's a guitar that comes in. Nintendo really, really likes some copyright. No, they'll be fine with this. Here. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, this is what I wanted. Oh. This is amazing. All right, pause it, Kev. Oh, man, that shit. Oh. You hear music like that, pause you it, know keep this up. you're playing a video game. And not only a video game, Smash Brothers. Like, right. they, they, what they've done is they have this, like, music style. Uh, that's kind of epic fight versions of other other songs, and they reach out to all these uh, composers and arrangers to take their favorite video game songs and make them sound like a, a fighting song. It's fun. So you can see here, like Mega Man Four. So Mega Man Four medley by June Seno, who's the guy that did all the Sonic the Hedgehog music right, for right, Sonic Adventure and right. stuff. And then like scroll down, Kev. Uh, we have Yoko Shimamura, who is the composer of all the um, of Final Fantasy 15, right? And all the of music the music from Zelda, music the, from the Kingdom, Street Fighter, the Kingdom Hearts from franchise, Splatoon. doing Street Fighter music. So it's kind of this fun crossover of everyone doing cool stuff. I don't know. I'm a fucking nerd for this shit, and it is. Can you I, can you play the uh, Legend of Zelda? I want to hear the Smash Brothers remix of that Breath of the Wild. Oh, it's just epic, isn't it? So epic. So epic. You're God, psyched so for this game, woo! I can tell. I'm very psyched. We very, all very are. psyched. Cannot very, wait. December 7th. Are. Bring it on. Are there any other links, Tim? Uh, yes. We, we may or may not get to them, though. You guys should do like a Smash Brothers version of like League of Heels. That's what you need. Mm-hmm. You need your own version of that, like the PAX Rumble, yeah. the Royal Rumble. Where we all play characters. Do it, and, do it with Smash Brothers. Yeah, the kind of funny world championship. That's a good idea, Gary. All right, all right. I'm liking that. Uh, last news story of the day. It's a short one. Madden Story Mode returns. This comes from Jason Schreier at Kotaku. Uh, the entertaining and surprisingly touching Madden Story Mode will return for Madden 2019. EA said today, promising that this new version of Longshot will offer more control over Devin Wade and Colt Cruz's football quest. Fans can also look forward to the continuation of last year's first ever Madden NFL Story Mode. Uh, with the return of Longshot Homecoming. Players will have even more control of those characters with more NFL gameplay, more ways to impact the story, new storylines, and the ability to continue their Longshot journey within franchise and ultimate team. Uh, so what's weird about this is, do you, are you familiar with Longshot? I was skeptical when they announced they were bringing um, story mode into Madden. They did it with FIFA as well. I mean, I'm, I'm, as you know, I'm a big story in mm-hmm. games guy. I love story in games. And I, it, even I was like, really? Sports game? Mm-hmm. Story? But they they did it. They they made it work. Like you said, it's surprisingly touching. They, did they you did play Madden? No, I so I have to be honest. I'm, I'm I'm basing my opinion on everything I read from people yeah. who did play this because I I won't get near a Madden game anymore. What mm-hmm. they do, like American football, is not for me. But I played some of the FIFA story mode, and that was really cool. Uh, Greg and Andy both played Longshot, the yeah. Madden mode, and they loved it. Yeah, like absolutely loved it. Uh, so it's interesting that they didn't talk about this at E3. And what's more interesting is they announced this thing that people seem to like three weeks before uh-huh. the game comes out. Right. It's a little worrisome. I'm going to be honest. I don't think this one's going to be that good. Well you, well, you think it was like a last minute thing? Yeah, I do not think that this is going to be as put together um, or as 
have as much just focus the fact they've announced it year. late doesn't necessarily mean that they started putting it in late that's true but I feel like that's the type of prestige thing that they want to show off if it was good. I think if it was successful last time, they probably decided relatively early on that they were going to go again. So I wouldn't mm-hmm. worry about it too much. We'll, we'll see. see. Greg will definitely play we it shall and see. give us a time review will tell. on Kind of Funny Games Cast. It's going to be a while until we find that out, though, Gary. If I want to know what games oh, are coming I out today. I felt that segue coming. I felt yeah? it coming. Yeah, did it feel good? Yeah, it felt very good. <laughs> Where would I look? <laughs> <laughs> That would be the official list of upcoming software across each and every platform as listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily Show hosts. That's us each and every weekday. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Uh, out today, we got four games. All right. Four Let's video hear games Let's hear for em. you. Uh, we have Animal Rivals on the Switch. <laughs> on the Switch. We have oh, Fear the Wolves on the PC. Oh, I like the sound of that just by the title. We have The Moose Man. <laughs> The titles have got me interested. The Moose Man. All on of these PS4, games just by title, I want them. Xbox One and Switch, and then we have Vertical Strike, Endless Challenge on the Switch. Now, Kev. Yeah, what's up? These are the thing. These are the links. And you know what? I, I just told you we might not do them. We're gonna do them because these games have ridiculous names, and I need to know. What I need they to know are. what they are. I particularly <laughs> want to know about Fear the Wolves and the Moose Man. What there's is an, the there's Moose an, Man? Well, there's an animal theme this week. Have you noticed? Yeah. Animal Rivals, mm-hmm. Fear the Wolves. The Moose, Moose Man, Man. Vertical, vertical Strike. strike I, I feel like that's the only one that's letting the side down here, but let's check it out. Oh, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna this is I'm Animal gonna, Rivals. Give me a second, though. I'm going to prep them all. Okay. Announcement trailer. There. One minute, seven seconds. What do you got? We'll do... So what we're going to do, Kev's going to prep all four of these these launch trailers or whatever they are, and uh, we're going to skim through it just to kind of get a taste of what these <laughs> games might be. Uh, okay. What's your Before looking at it, what's your bet on which of these games looks best? Fear of the Wolves. Yeah? I, I mean, I'm just going by the title that I want the best. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. I Moose mean, Man. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Moose, about Moose Man sounds Man well. awesome, but I'm not feeling too good if about it. Could it. Go either Just way. look at this. I actually think Vertical Strike Endless Challenge is going to be the most. Are you kidding? Okay, let's do. Now. Let's do this. Let's try and guess what these games what they are going to be. Animal Rivals. What do you think that is? I think Animal Rivals Mice is going to be a, a like shitty fighting game. Okay. Yeah. With animals fighting each uh-huh. other. All right. What do you think Fear the Wolves is? Now, I got a little bit of a clue because I saw the opening oh, yeah? frame there. It says something about Chernobyl. Fear the wolves. My guess is that you're walking through a deserted Chernobyl and fucking the animals have taken over. Maybe the wolves have mutated because of the radiation. Uh, huh. It could be radioactive wolves. Now, Moose Man. What could Moose Man be? I got I to gotta tell you, I'm lost on that one. That could be anything. <laughs> That's why I'm so excited about it. That could be anything. Yeah, I don't know. And then Vertical Strike Endless Challenge sounds I'm gonna like say a, a that puzzle that game. Is a, like a fun puzzle game. I'm going to say that that... My initial feeling of it was like a pilot wings kind of thing, mm. but I think because the strike suggests the some kind of action. Yeah, I don't know. That was, I'm 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 at a loss. Let's find out. All right, let's find we out. We got animal let's rivals. Try animal, let's animal rivals is first up. What do you got? Blue Sunset Games. What do you got for us? Let's see. Let, okay, let's see who called on. this. That loudest. We don't we don't need the audio. Choose your animal. Okay. Okay. Sloth versus panda. I love it. Oh man. Oh, man. Win the tournament and become the king. Okay, so is it not a, crazy it, about the art style? Could, oh, all right. What are we looking at here? Collect. Is I, it like a party game, like a multiplayer? What uh, platform? I don't know what's going on here. Yeah, the, it doesn't look good though. Let's I'm move be on. Let's move on, everybody. Yeah, it I'm looks like for the audio listeners, it kind of looks like a a mix between Power Stone, Smash Brothers, and Mario Party. That's a pass. <laughs> but all the the not good parts of those games. Hard pass. Let's right. move on. Next up, we got Fear the Wolves. Okay. Chernobyl died in ages past. See, this is what I was thinking, the yeah. Chernobyl kind of vibe. The artifacts of humanity go, go are forward. all that remain. All right. All right. Oh. Okay. All oh, right. Wow. Look, first okay. person. We got a, a first got person axe. game. So this, so look, I guess you're in Russia well, some somewhere lighting here. lighting effects going on. There's a guy in a parachute that looks like it's got some holes in coming it. down. It or is that like, like a loot crate? It was like a oh, shot. here come oh, the, wolves. the wolves. Oh, I don't you better fear them. Yeah, fear those wolves, You better fear the wolves. Okay, this looks like a real video game. Shout out to them. You guys did it. Hold on. Oh, All right, yeah. here's a, oh okay, here's a guy. He's landed. I just want to see if he's going he's gonna to go kill the guy. Are you kill him with the axe? Yeah, kill him. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take his shit. That's what you do in a video game. Oh, man, oh he's got the gas mask, mask on the guy. This seems like PUBG, but with wolves. I mean, who, who doesn't want that? <laughs> okay, cool. This looks decent. All right. There's some giraffes. Okay. Next up, Kev, we got the Moose Man <laughs> strapping. Yeah, I'm, the Moose Man. I'm very, I'm very intrigued by. Moose Man getting a lot I, of awards. I will investigate Fear the Wolves based on the, the, the ten seconds that I saw. You said it was a winner for best narrative. Okay, all right, two D. Okay. 
Moose Man looks nothing is, is, like is, I thought is, it is would. Is that the Moose Man? It is told that he is one of the seven. This looks awesome. Yeah. One of the seven? The old gods? Or the new and you can see shadows of the dead. <laughs> Scroll right. a bit more forward. Wait, this is interesting. He don't, we don't know his path nor his destination, but if our tribe is in dire need, he's he wearing will help. the skull of a moose. This looks like it almost has kind of a limbo inside kind it, of vibe. It's to limbo it. inside mixed with, what was that name? Brothers? Sword and Sorcery? Uh, brother, uh, oh, uh, yeah. Sword and Sorcery, Brothers, Tale of Two Sons. Yeah. I, I'm liking this. Kind of journey. I'm, I'm get, intrigued. I'm getting some journey vibes. That looks cool. I'm intrigued. Wow, Moose Man is surprised the, is, the hell out of me. So that was I mean, this been out, this has already been out on PC. Now it's coming to consoles. Do you have to mm. block things from hitting your head? Do you think that's what it is? I, Maybe. I mean, it looks it looks very avant garde. I'm liking it. It's got it won an award for best narrative. Wow, thing. interesting. That, All looks, right. that looks really okay, cool. Okay, Vertical Strike. This, Vertical Strike, Endless see. Challenge. Oh, you were right. It's a plane game. Is it? Wipe out endless waves of enemies. Good lord, this is okay, not going to so be good. Okay, so this is going to be like an afterburner uh, kind this, of thing? Oh, here we go. All right, let's... All right, so yeah, I'm in, a, I'm in what looks like an F-22. It looks good, though. Don't, I mean, it looks no, decent enough. You I know what? Know, I actually Switch like... The, I enjoy these kind of games, and I wish there were more of them. Yeah, you know, like, uh, what is, it, is it Ace Combat? Yeah. Is yeah. that, the, is that Combat, the franchise? Yeah. This looks like a PS2 game, Kevin. Dude, it does. It does have Switch. The Switch can play... But, Way better you know, than this. ever since yeah. FA18... This looks horrible. Ever since FA18 Interceptor... Look at the fire coming out right, of the plane. Not, it doesn't look it visually looks great. looks like a yeah, shitty sure. mobile game. It does. It looks like a PS... <laughs> it looks like a b at best PS3. Oh, man. Wrong, All man. right. Well, Remember that shitty Independence Day game they had on PS2? It kind of yeah. looks a little bit like yeah. that. Dude, PS1. It was PS1. It was PS1. Remember that shit, Kev? The yeah. Independence Day game? I sure did. But I like that. I wish we had more... You know, the flight simulator mm -hmm. genre... Especially at the hardcore, and that went away completely. There's yeah. very much, there's, there's not no. much at all left. And I used to, I used to play this game called FA18 Interceptor on the on the Commodore Amiga, and I loved it. It was fantastic. It was kind of an action Amiga. flight sim, and the, and those kind of games almost completely went away. I want more Ace Combat. I want yeah. more Vertical Strike. I want games like that. I want my flight sims. Ace Combat. It's coming eventually. We've seen it hit like five PSXs. Uh, new dates for you. In the latest financial report, Ubisoft revealed South Park The Stick of Truth will be released digitally on Switch and the eShop this September. All right. That's, that's a good cool. game. I enjoyed that. Um, and a new Digimon game for consoles has been revealed. Digimon Survive, a survival strategy RPG that combines 2D and 3D with lots of genres coming to PS4 and Switch. It's going to be the first ever Switch Digimon game. Uh, it also have choices that will change the story and evolutions. And Agumon is the partner. I saw some screenshots of this. It looks really freaking cool. Like some of it, it seems like it's mixing too many genres for my taste, but the battle system is very Fire Emblem-esque, like strategy RPG, and it's all hand-drawn and it looks exactly like the cartoons. I'm like, all right, yeah. you've got my attention. Yeah, We'll see if you keep it. Deals of the day, 12 months of Xbox Live Gold for $40 for Microsoft. Uh, this is an official deal from Microsoft, so you can go to Microsoft.com and get it there. You know, the Xbox last time I was on with you, I ended up getting that deal of the day, that uh, oh, Switch controller, and the Super NES Switch controller, and, and it's great. I told you. It's great. I packed I in my it. backpack. Can't wait to get in the plane I and play some Octopath Connected Traveler. Connected right up. Mm -hmm. Feels just like a Super NES controller mm -hmm. with the convex concave buttons that I love. It's perfect. Work with the dual sticks, it, they integrate perfectly into the design. Yeah. It's terrific, especially for old school. I was playing, um, I just downloaded yesterday, Pac-Man uh, Championship yeah. Edition, which I love. So good. Uh, and it worked perfectly. Those kind of games are perfect for an old school controller. That D-pad is it's 10 out of oh, 10. Yeah, they it's got just it. perfect. They got it exactly right. It's time for Reader Mail. Uh, this episode of Kind of Funny Games Daily is brought to you by Omaha Steaks. Remember when Omaha Steaks fed your daddy for Father's Day? Oh, Greg, I think Greg Miller wrote this. Greg, I, you're, you're a bad man. <laughs> now they want to feed your summer barbecue. Why Omaha Steaks? Omaha Steaks offers everything to satisfy your grilling needs. Quality, all the highest quality cuts with one-of-a-kind flavor. All beef is USDA inspected for quality and aged for 21 days to unlock the full flavor and tenderness of the cuts. Variety, all of the best cuts of beets, bison from the Golden Plains, globally sourced and frozen fresh seafood from World Port Seafood, poultry, pork, veal, lamb, vegetables, desserts. This is making me hungry. Stuff. It's great. Kevin. How much do you love this Omaha Steaks? Oh, oh, oh man, it's good stuff. Yeah? I got some at home. Yeah. Can we get some free samples of oh, this yeah, stuff? They said uh, this no, stuff. we don't, Gary. <laughs> Kevin just wants yeah, to eat it all. you knew what my next question was going to be, didn't you? Eat it all. Right now, Omaha Steaks is giving a limited time offer to our listeners for the summer. Go to omahasteaks.com and type KF Games in the search bar, and you can get this Omaha Steaks grill-ready collection for only $39.99. That's 80% off. 80% off? That's a lot of percents, man. Here's what you'll get. Two tender filet mignons, two beefy top sirloins, four juicy boneless pork chops, four boneless chicken breast, four all beef Omaha steak burgers. I love those. 
four traditional kielbasa sausages, four award-winning gourmet jumbo franks, one Omaha steak seasoning packet, plus, and listen up to this, ladies and gentlemen, you can get four made-from-scratch caramel apple tartlets for free. so good. And Kevin loves those, too. Again, this limited time package is for only $39.99. When you go to OmahaSteaks.com, type KF Games in the search bar, and add the Grill Ready Collection to your cart. You know, during this part of the show when, you know, Greg, you know, flogs mattresses and underwear mm-hmm. and whatever it is that, you know, is, is sponsoring you guys this week, I usually just stay out of it because yeah. I don't want to, you know, unless it's something I really mm-hmm. like. Mm-hmm. Like when you do Puzzle Quest, I'll chip in and say, oh, I love Puzzle Quest. Exactly. But I won't endorse anything unless it actually sounds good to me. Of course. This sounds pretty good. It's not, and it, Gary? I mean, it might just because it's lunchtime. Yeah. And I didn't have I didn't if, have it a sound, if it sounds good for you, I'm ready to eat. If it sounds good to you, you'll want to get this offer soon in time for the summer. Go to OmahaSteaks.com. Yeah, we can. You, you got to go to OmahaSteaks.com, type KF Games in the search bar. Grab your friends and family I might do and fire it. up the I grill. Might do it. <laughs> All right. Let's do a couple, a couple of readers. We're going to have to cut this one a little bit early because uh, we've got a plane to catch. So we'll just do a few of these. Aaron writes in, and let me tell you, I've never met a man whose name is Aaron that is spelt with not one. Not two, but three A's. Not all in a row, though. A A R A N. It's a lot of A's. Sounds like a like an RPG name. Mm-hmm. Where you like, accidentally... like, a, like an NPC that you yeah. meet, like the guy that the vendor outside the town is Aaron. Yeah, Aaron with three the vendor A's. with an A. Uh, he says, "Hey KFGD crew, this could be nothing, but I've just had an email from Amazon UK saying my order of The Last of Us Part Two will arrive on the 29th of March, 2019. <sighs> I wasn't expecting the game until late 2019 at the earliest, but the specific date from Amazon has me wondering if Naughty Dog are further along in development than people think. What are your guys' thoughts? Love the show. Keep doing what you're doing. Is, uh, is Last of Us Two really that far out? I didn't realize. Is it there was been 2019? Oh yeah. Okay. Oh definitely. definitely. Okay. And it's going to be even farther out than this. This release date is totally made up. Um, All right. I saw today. Yeah, someone else hit us up about that. These stranding. Amazon emails are meaningless. And it seems like for some reason, a lot of the, the PlayStation games today were updated with this March 29th release date. That is not real. I'm sorry to, to break your, your hopes and dreams there. Oh. Dr. Funder says, what happened to Joy-Con color customization? It feels like last year there was a new Joy-Con color released every month. And now it feels like we haven't seen Nintendo release any new variants all, at all this year. Just want to see if you guys thought that maybe they were willing, they were they were waiting for a big release to bring out more Joy-Con variants. P.S. What happened to Labo? Thanks, guys. Dead. What's the next big release you can imagine seeing some new Joy-Cons for Smash Brothers? <sighs> yes. There's Smash Brothers. Before that, there's Pokemon. Let's go, Pikachu and Eevee. Pokemon, I, I can totally see some we're like yellow, we're definitely gonna yellow get Joy-Cons for that. or something. Let's do a Switch XL, you know what I mean? It's too early for that. Um, ah. But Switch XL. But the thing with the, the Joy-Cons is it, it is surprising that we haven't seen as much this year because you're right. Last year, they were like every month there was some new variant. I really like those lime green ones that they did for uh, Splatoon. Mm-hmm. And all of them have been great. Like, I love yeah. that all of my friends have a different have combination. Been? I know the, the green ones for Splatoon. No, it was, wasn't it ARMS that had the lime green ones? No, ARMS had the bright yellow. Bright like yellow. neon yellow. And then Splatoon, Splatoon was what, like the yellow and the like the lime green and the purple kind of green vibe? And, green and pink. Green and neon pink. pink. That's right. Hot um, pink. And then, then they were eventually they made it so you can have two pink or two green. Right. There's also the Mario was just the red. Yes, I like that. The original launch was neon blue and neon red. And then, I think that's it yeah. so far. That's official. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to buy every Joy-Con gray. that comes out just because I know some people will. Yeah. Will buy everyone that comes out because they got to be the completists. I'm not buying everyone, but then that's the problem with me is they launched with my perfect blue. So I, I don't know that I ever need to buy another Joy-Con ever again. I kind of regret getting the gray ones now. I kind of wish I'd gone with the red and blue. Yeah. It's just a bit more colorful, a bit mm. more fun. See, I bought my, I got the gray Switch yeah. because I knew I wanted the blue. So then I just bought the blue set. Got it. Because I was like, I don't want one in one. Got it. I'm not a peasant. <laughs> not a fucking weirdo. Dude, I just Jesus. don't fuck with that red, man. I'm bummed out because we're in the market for a second Switch at home because we love the Switch. We've been mm-hmm. thinking about getting a second one, but you can't download the same games onto it. Yeah, you know, to keep them on one. They, they got to change they that. Got, well, they got the family thing coming up with the, they got to the they got to they, they got to do so. it because every other console does it. This is what Nintendo frustrate me so much because they do such great stuff, but then they do boneheady Nintendo things like moves, this as man. well. They'll always do it. Um, but I'm hoping beyond hope, and I, I don't expect this that we get. GameCube Joy Cons for Ooh. Um, Smash Brothers. Oh, actually, that feel like the GameCube mm-hmm. handles. Yeah, that would be crazy. If, if you give me that, on oh, the what go, a great idea! Oh, it'd be so good. I and would, they would, so and they'd so slot right bad. into the little, uh, yeah. the little holder. It'd be great. But don't you think you'd also see just straight up like GameCube retro controllers come out? They they already announced that. Okay, they're they're putting nothing, but they're wired. 
So that's my problem. Oh. Is you need to plug no wave them bird? Into, into the dock. Got to have uh, my wave bird. Well, if you, if you have, you can use the wave bird, but you still need the dock, which right. needs USB. So you right. can't use it with just the switch. Right. <sighs> Life's complicated, man. Uh, let's do one more question. Mm. Let me see if there's one in here that's, that tickles my fancy. Yeah. Which one you want, Gary? I'm, I'm looking right now. You want to do the Star Wars games? Yeah, let's do it. Raul6041 says, what's up, kind of funny crew? My question is about Star Wars games. In my opinion, EA isn't doing a great job managing this huge property as both Battlefront 1 and 2 were misses, and I feel like there isn't a lot of hype for Respawn's new game. What direction does EA need to go in to get it on the right track, or should Disney intervene? Also, what do you guys think makes a good Star Wars game? So I think what they need to do is focus on story, because that's the heart of Star Wars in any medium. All the best Star Wars games, I feel, are the ones that focus on story. Knights of the mm -hmm. Old Republic. Even stuff like TIE Fighter had like a great X-Wing TIE Fighter. They had great stories. Yeah. Um, Battlefield, out of the gate, when EA did that deal with, uh, with Disney, 10 years of Star Wars games. And the very first, I know they had to get it out in a hurry, but the, mm -hmm. very first, the, the idea that the very first thing they did had no story, that to me is antithetical to Star Wars. Star Wars is all about story. Even when you have your own little, like when I was a kid, I used to have the Star Wars figures, the mm -hmm. little characters. You, you know, you kind of make stories with them. You tell, you tell yourself your own stories. So story has always been central to Star Wars. If you don't have story, you don't have Star Wars. And so the fact that they came out of the gate with Battlefield one, uh, Battlefront 1, no, st no story, complete whiff, complete f fucking failure. Mm -hmm. Battlefield, uh, sorry, Battlefront 2, they made more of an effort. Fair play to them. I thought that was a pretty good story. They obviously had a lot of other issues. I actually am pretty excited. I, I know some shit about the Respawn game that I can't talk about, but mm -hmm. I think that's potentially going to be great but then they fucked up with amy hennig's game that was yeah. going to be tremendous and the, something went horribly wrong who knows what we'll probably never know focus on story but honestly i think the fix is in for ea i think ea fucked up star wars games uh with 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 this 10-year deal that they had my guess is when their 10 years in o is over which i think is 2024 whatever 2023 yeah, i think tw i think 2013 is when they announced the deal I don't think that their their contract will get be renewed. Re I, don't, yeah. I, th I think they'll go with someone else. The respawn game, I'm I'm a little I'm concerned about it. Uh, just and it's it's still always out, so we'll see. But the idea of it and the idea of where the story takes place yeah. of uh, hunt like in that time where the Jedi yeah. are being hunted, awesome. Yeah, that's Can't a good. I, I, I always feel like when you're deciding to tell a Star Wars story where you are on the timeline is, is, is a big deal because it speaks to a lot to like, what's your audience? You know, mm -hmm. do you want to go with the JJ verse, you know, the current generation? Do you want to go original trilogy? Do you want to go prequel? Do you want to go somewhere in between? There's a lot of gaps. There's a mm -hmm. lot, of, like you said, that, that area where the Jedi are being hunted, a lot of story potential. So mm -hmm. I am excited about the Respawn game. Very exciting stuff. Also, just love talking about Star Wars with you. It just Never gets me, old. It, it makes me so happy. Uh, time to squad up. Zach Thompson writes in. He's playing on PlayStation 4. His PSN name is Son of Tomp 8264. That's S O N O F T H O M P 8264. He says, looking to bask in the warmth of the summer twilight event in Monster Hunter World with fellow hunters and searching for guardians to share the glories of raids and escalation protocol in Destiny 2 as we anticipate the Solstice of Heroes event. So if you want to play some Destiny or Monster Hunter with Zach Thompson, hit him up. Son of Tomp 8264. Now it's time for kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. You Happy guys wrote in. Let us know what we're going on. I don't know, man. We'll see. What day is it? Is the 18th? It's the 18th today. Okay, okay. We're not looking too bad. That's good. Um, What did we get wrong, Tim? Let's see. Kebab says articles have come out as recently as five hours ago saying that Microsoft will not have a conference at this year's Gamescom. Oh. So, All cool. right, so maybe that was the whole section of the show was a waste of time. Uh, TG Burt says, not really a you're wrong, more of an update. After going live on the show, Microsoft updated their, their announcement to remove the all new hardware part. Ah, it now reads that's new why we struggled to come up with It now reads the new, the new Xbox be. One bundles and accessories. Bundles, there you go. Yeah. That's what it's going to be. It's going to be a mm -hmm. PUBG bundle with some sh skin job. It's um, a lot of people. Correcting us on that, that one. Thank yep. you. Thank you. Yep. Bandpass says, hi, Konami does have a AAA game every year, Pro Evolution Soccer. That is true. They do. I thought we were talking about Konami, not Capcom. Konami. Oh, you, you just said Capcom. Did I say Capcom? I think you did. I heard Konami. Yeah, you're losing it. We'll go to the tape on that one. <laughs> Either way, Konami I may have had another brain fart. It wouldn't, be, it wouldn't be a Widow Wednesday without me tuning out for five <laughs> seconds and getting something wrong. Uh, a lot of people updating about the thing. Thank yep, you. Yep, yep. Thank you. 
Um, Zach says, Kevin, TCL models are great. I've had one since Black Friday and love it. Believe Gary. Yeah. I would, I'd never heard of the brand, but I went to Wirecutter. It's the one they recommend, and Wirecutter usually uh, has good recommendations. Best Buy has them at like 352, so. 352 know. for that same model? No, no, I'm saying 350 as well. Final thing of the day, Cash writes in and says, Tim forgot one color of Joy-Cons. The dark blue one's currently only available at the Nintendo of America employee store in Washington. What's the dark blue one for? I've never seen these. Interesting. There's a link to a video that he put, but huh. I can't pull okay. that up. Huh. Interesting. All right. We did okay. Yeah, we did good. Well, Gary, this was another fun one. It's I always a pleasure. The Omaha steak bit made always, me oh, hungry. Yeah, I got to seek out some food them, after this show. Steaks. We got some really exciting stuff coming tomorrow and Friday. Uh, since all of us are going to be down at Comic Con and Jared's out, Andrea's with us. It's all this crazy stuff. Yeah, who's holding the fort? Uh, we got members of the community coming through. Seriously, we best got, friends. Uh, we got yeah, best friends. We got uh, Double D himself, Cheeks Junior, who you've seen on Kind of Funny Games Cast last year. When They're going to we, be here. Yeah, hosting the show. Hosting the show. Who's gonna Who's gonna chaperone? Who's gonna supervise these guys? Big Kev dog. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We got so we got Cheeks Junior. Otherwise, they might clear this fucking place out. And the man Snowbike Mike. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's that switch projector dog you got back there. That'd be gone. That'd be under my coat out the door. <laughs> and Snowbike Mike, host of Kind of Funny Prom. Both these are amazing gentlemen. I cannot wait to see them uh, do the show tomorrow and Friday. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Treat it's them nice. Be fun. In the, chat. the lunatics taking over the asylum. <laughs> I'm gonna be excited to watch that. Until next time. I love you.